get in paper on this play a haters old news money on the other line so i'm not ladies and gentlemen welcome back to another edition of i'm not gonna hold you the off season man my interview series uh for the off season you know we talked to a whole bunch of creators in the sports media entertainment entrepreneur space uh man uh so you know we got a, we got another episode for y'all here uh tonight today well today uh we've got a very busy man here uh, a guy you know i feel like the phrase uh you know what people say uh this is my brother or things of that nature is uh it's overused too much today to me but this guy right here is my brother man my guy mike michael willis uh no, who is the the owner and co-founder of pillars fashion club man which is a uh, clothing line out there in Chicago. You guys got a whole bunch of uh, stores and things of that nature, man. But uh, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. I see you're, you're actually at, the, at one of y'all locations now. Yeah, yeah, I'm in the back right now. You know, somebody had called, but, you know, I got one got one of the guys having everything in the front, so everything all good to go. So h- how's it going on your end, bro? I mean, um, everything's smooth. It's hot in Chicago right now. Like, we got, like, a nasty heat wave, like – it's about time. He's in the ball. No, look, somebody, <laughs> he, he, moved, he moves to L.A. He moves to L.A. and forget where you come from. Bro. He calls you and be like, oh, man, it's just, it be in January. It's just a, it's just a brisk 80 degrees. I'm out. <laughs> funny, funny, funny. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, I'm going to give y'all, like, a little, like, a little breakdown on, like, how, how pretty much our friendship started, man. I've known this guy for almost 20 years now. It was 2003. Yeah. We both yeah. went to Kerry uh, Metro High School on uh, it was southwest side of Chicago. Forty yeah. ninth and Pulaski, yep. Yeah, Forty ninth Pulaski, man. Uh, and you know, I've known this guy Lily. We had uh, what was the name? Mister Watson's class. Mister Watson. <laughs> Mister Watson with the braces. Yeah, yeah, yeah with yeah. the braces. What was the class though? It was it was it was literature. His literature, yeah, because we were at like yeah. Romeo and Juliet in that motherfucker. Yeah, but yeah, um, right. pretty much this has been my guy. Like you know, we we got shot at together. <laughs> Sure. Walking down 79th. <laughs> Walking down 79th Street. Uh, you know, 79th. in high school, man. So this has been my guy, man. Uh, and yeah, man, it's been dope to see your progression, not just as just your friend, but like, you know, just watching from the sidelines of how you guys have moved so quickly in what this almost six years now uh, since yeah. uh, Pillars. Now, I've known you for a long time and I knew you would always do something great. I just didn't know you wanted to go the entrepreneur route. So what right. made you want to you know become an entrepreneur get your own company well i i gotta give credit to you know my business partner my my friend also that um that started with me um andre i um, we went to college together fraternity brothers and you know even when we in college we always you know saying rock heavy with each other we was always you know coming up with ideas to you know some way to make money you know and um like you said i, I knew i was gonna make a lot of money in life i didn't know like what i exactly wanted to do you know what i'm saying like most people yeah. i want to be a cop when i get older and my thing is oh, i just want to make a lot of money so yeah. i i thought it was going to be the corporate america situation and but then um andre just came to me uh one day i was working for a fortune 500 company and he just came to me one day like man look bro like you know we gotta use our minds in this we need to you know saying make our own money we need to do our own thing and he had an idea at first it was we had several ideas of uh, you know, saying ways to make money, and then it just landed on clothing, and it's just been taken off ever since. Yeah, it's like with with the fashion aspect, man. Like you know, you've always been on top of that. Like even back in like high school, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like I said, this is a guy who drove a Denali in high school. Now, granted, y'all got to um, paint the picture. Bro. This is like 2005, <laughs> okay? You know what I'm saying? It, it's not yeah, with spin. It's not normal for like a 60 year old to be driving around in the Denali. Sure. So. You sure. know, Mike always had, you always had, your, you know, your vibe, you know what I'm saying, you, you know, you dress well, all that. So, like, what made you, what what, what was about fashion that you was like, I'm not going to do any other type of business, but fashion is where I want to head to. Because you got to get fits off. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like don't matter what, uh, stay fresh at all times. And, you know, we went to Curie where it was no uniform. Yeah. So, that was, that was a thing. And it was a different transition when I went from, you know, high school to college. Because college is more of a laid back environment you only really yeah. put outfits on when it's an event going on yeah. man people in college used to look at me crazy on a tuesday morning i got jeans on a, a, a button up at the time button up and some mics they ain't like bro where you going you know what i'm saying like <laughs> most, most people got on flip-flops and some jogger pants and, yeah. and things like that so um that was just the, the main thing like it was always you know i, I love the jordan releases 
I used to always get the Jordans and get a couple outfits to match with it, you know, and then it got to a point where um, Jordans becoming more expensive. My parents, okay, you got to get a job. And I had a job at 14 years old. You yeah, know? you was so the only I, one with a job. I, I, I yeah, know. so, <laughs> so I, 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 you know, my, my thing was to buy clothes and, and shoes. I remember Cordell uh, Fraction, he went to high school as his own basketball team, really good hooper. He swore up and down as a drug dealer. <laughs> a lot I, of people, a lot of people thought that that was the rumor. Was, people are like, "Mike said that." I'm like, well, like "I'm with I'm that like, nigga every day," and that's my knowledge. <laughs> nah, I'm, like, I'm like, "Man, I'm 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 fucking five ten at that time. I was like five ten, one forty, soaking red." I'm like, "I'm not selling no drugs," you know what I'm saying? But it was just always, you know, it just feels good to, you know, what I'm saying look good and dress nice, and you know, it just it's not for nobody else. It's just because everybody got their own style. But you know, what I'm saying for me, I always. Always on that, and like it was always a motto in college too, like stay fresh at all times, because you never know who you might come across. You might come across a nice little old lady, you know. what I'm saying you could have had your little bad day when you just got a hole in your shirt and things like that, and you just missed out on it. Or you might meet somebody who's a, you know, say representative for another company, Nike or something like that. You just never know. So yeah, you want to at least look decent most of the time. You know, what yeah, I'm saying? And, and you know, in high school, and you know, Curie High School, Chicago Public Schools, and this is like pre-internet area era like well, i feel like i feel like our class was like the last of like i'm gonna call it the last of the real era i'm gonna be an old head and call it that sure. like you know youtube didn't come out to what our senior year of high senior. school yep, yep our senior sure. high school we didn't have none of that you know what I'm saying? showing our age we definitely yeah. showing our age <laughs> we, we showing our age you know what i'm saying it's like this was like the I always call Curie was like the 300 when it comes to like joking on each other or he oh, yeah, for sure. in Chicago. Like it's the only place where like it could be 7 a.m. in the morning. And if you ain't dressed right, motherfuckers is gonna get on your ass. Yeah, you <laughs> you're gonna get these jokes. Nobody's accepting <laughs> for these jokes, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So and like you said, another reason too is like you know, what I'm saying growing up, you know, my parents did a hell of a job raising me, they did a hell of a job, you know, giving me, you know, what I'm saying the stuff that I needed for sure. But, you know, at first, you know, saying we didn't have much. So I didn't have the Jordans at first, things like that. But then once my parents started doing well for themselves and things like that, they made sure that, you know what I'm saying, not only did I get the needs, I got some of the wants, most of yeah. the wants, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I always shout out my parents for that. So they worked their butt off just for having me looking nice. I remember, you know, it was always twice, you know, beginning of the school year and then after the first semester, I get a whole new wardrobe. So I'm going in cars. I'm buying, you know, this is when Sean John, Jabot, yeah. Rockwell, all that stuff, uh -huh. all that stuff. Out. I was a Rockwell you know model then. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, <laughs> Ibiza jeans and these yeah. $100, $200 jeans and shirts and stuff like that. So, you know, once I was able to, you know what I'm saying, like what I like, I'm like okay, yeah, I'm, I'm never, I'm never want to go back to that. And there's nothing going back wrong with that, but once you come from something that's, you know, not that you, you would do anything to not go back to that. So that's where the hard work and dedication come from. Yeah. And, and you know, you bring a good point too, because, you know, and y your parents are great, man. I love Mr. 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 Willis, man. They, every time I come over, you know what I'm saying? It's always love. And, uh, sure. you know, uh, my, my parents are the same way. Like my first, what, two, two and a half years of high school, my parents like bought all my clothes. You know what I'm saying? Right, so that's sure. why I would have like all the rock and wear, you know, all the different clothes, you know, and things like that. And then she, after I got a junior, she was like, you got to start paying for your own stuff. And that's when I became the Curie bootleg, man. <laughs> <laughs> I had the bootlegs on deck for about for sure. a good two years. That's kind of like my entrepreneur uh, sure. hustle came up. But, you know, so making the transition to college. Now, you went to, to Eastern and, and that. So, and I remember, like, you guys, like, I feel like your entrepreneur – Entrepreneur Hustle kind of started a little before because y'all used to throw like hella for sure. parties for sure. uh, down there. You know, the infamous barn party I always pull up to. Like, tell me how like the party hustle kind of like started things. It's like we treated everything like a business. So like a lot of people on the, on the outside, you know, they're looking at it as a party, you know what I'm saying, an event, just have fun and things like that for sure. But like I said, what we're doing is we want to give you the best environment. We want to give you the best party. We want you to talk about things like that, but we're going to charge you for it. You know right. what I'm saying? So, so people are going to pay for stuff that's, you know what I'm saying, legitimately great. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, these guys host good parties. These guys throw good events. I'm going to spend my money there. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is not new. All we did was, you know, I went to Eastern North University. Like I said, I'm part of 586 Fraternity Incorporated at Delta Chi. Delta Chapter. So, that's all we, you know, what I'm saying we hosted some of the greatest events, hotel, pool parties, and the small, and the, the small campus. You know what I'm saying? So we had to make the most of it. So 
you know, we were selling t-shirts, we were doing bar house crawls, bar crawls, selling hoodies and things like that. So all we did was take that, you know, saying that notion that, you know, saying experience and just move into clothing. It's the same thing. You know, if you provide good quality, people will pay for it, you know, saying over and over and over again, because you're going to look at it like a party, the barn party is nothing but honestly, it's nothing but a huge area. And y'all paying for it. Yeah. Like in the, the party, like it's not, I, I don't have a roller coaster in there. I don't have a screen projector. <laughs> I don't have none of that, but yeah. it's a good time. It, we providing yeah. transportation. You pay for it's the a experience. Good time. You're paying for the experience. You know what I'm saying? So when you're buying our clothing at Pillars, you know, we want some, you know, some people like, oh, you know, it might be expensive, but then soon they feel the quality or they buy one, they come back like, man, I wore this a couple of times and never shrunk. The color didn't go away and things like that. We want you to feel, you know what I'm saying? Welcome and be like, man, this is, this is some good clothing. Yeah. And yeah, that, and that's key thing right there. Cause I think uh, with fashion, especially in Chicago, but like really all, oh, even out here in LA, I feel like fashion is becoming kind of like, like with rapping, like everybody wants to do it. Like everybody, everybody wants, wants to, to rap. Everybody want to drop a call on. Everybody want to do what I'm doing right now. Host the podcast and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. So what is like the biggest thing we're like, you know, because even me, I might get frustrated. Like, man, too many of y'all in front of a mic who don't need yeah. to be fucking talking. Like, mm-hmm. what is the thing? Like, I'm going to, this is what we got that separates us from other clothing lines, not just in Chicago, but just in general. Just in general, like, really the experience, the professionalism, and the hard work dedication. Like, like we always tell ourselves, we tell the guys like, the one thing, the reason why we're always going to be where we at and just succeed more and more, because our motive is like, no one's going to outwork us. Right. Like, like no one's going to outwork. We want you to walk in our store and have the best experience. Like all our stores, locations look different, but some of them look the same. Like the wow factor, they're coming in, you know what I'm saying, being greeted, you know, hey, how are you doing? You know, just the experience. It got green turf, you know what I'm saying? Got the shoes, got the displays you got the color schemes and things like that it just feel more you know saying welcoming you know so and like the hard work and dedication like you got to keep being innovative you got to come with new things and things and and quality like that like quality is going to speak for itself you know saying like i'm not here you know i however everybody else do their business that's fine you know what i'm saying but simplicity and quality is always going to win you know it's nothing that's going to be better than something simple you know, putting, you know, if you want to put rhinestones and then that, yeah, but guess what? Something basically simple could go from any age group, you know what I'm saying? From a, a little kid to an 80 year old man, which you saw an outfit to an 80 year old man the other day, you know what I'm saying? He loved it, loved the quality, and it wasn't too much. Like, you can't be like, who doesn't like something that's simple? How many right. people in the world that's wearing a white tee? I, I, I got that white tee, a white <laughs> tee, a white yeah. tee. It was an era just the white tee. They made a song about it. Yeah, simple. You can never like it. Like it's a white tee, you know what I'm saying? It goes with everything. Like white Air Force Ones. It goes with everything. So that's the thing. You know what I'm saying? The professionalism, you know, um, the hard work, dedication with it. You know what I'm saying? The, and the the experience that we give when people walk right. into each and one of our stores. Now let's take it back a little bit to the beginning of Pillars. So it's kind of like a two part question for you. One. What does pillars stand for? I know you guys have it in caps, and I love how when you arrive, y'all correct people when somebody does do it right. the wrong way. And also, like, what was the beginning like? You know, your first uh shirt, and who is like the like the original, I guess, pillars crew? Okay. Um uh, God honest true about the name. A lot of people, you know, saying I always got a backstory with the name. It was just a name. Okay. To be God honest with you, like <laughs> me, me and me and Dre came up with so many names, I still got the the list of names that we was coming up with and it was a yes and no yes and no and it was just a name it was like okay it sound cool and things like that but then it as we build it did become like some meaning like a pillar or something that you know saying holds something up you right. know so as our business got bigger we needed more pillars to hold our business up it couldn't just have just me and dre because eventually if it's just me and dre and we got five stores eventually it's going to fall you know exactly. what I'm saying? so you so it's like a it's like a build so you're going to need more pillars to hold it up so it can withstand it's it growing more and more. Um, it's like I said, it started off with, with me and Dre. And then uh, we brought along our other frat brothers, brought along Rob, um, Frank and Sid. And then that's how we, we just hit the streets. I was selling, I was selling t-shirts in the back of my Jeep. Yeah. I mean, you know, like is, yeah. the crazy thing about it, I just paid my Jeep off, you know? So I was, I was selling t-shirts back of our Jeep. I was, um, we all were like in pop-up shops two or three times a week. 
You know what I'm saying? Some pop-up shops good, some bad, but just getting our face out there. You know what I'm saying? I, I remember when some people were like, man, this this hoodie should cost more than, you know what I'm saying, what we're selling it for because of the quality. But you know how it is in the game. Like if people don't know about it, they're not going to willing right, to pay that exactly. much. But it it was it was long sleepless nights. There's a it was a lot of hard work. You know, some people like we like we all had jobs, we all had other responsibilities. So, you know, everybody's experience is gonna be different, but we made a lot of sacrifice to to get where yet, you know, why people you know, kicking it and but trust me, we wanted to kick it and go to the parties and the boat parties and things like that. But we we we're, we're thinking long term. You know, what I'm saying like I could sacrifice this two or three years of partying to focus on a lifetime of retirement in five five um five years. You know, what I'm saying so. That was our focus. Now you mentioned like all the parties. This is a quick side note. I just want to say when I was there in Chicago, I was outside my last four years before I moved. There was no boat parties. There wasn't no yeah. day parties. Wasn't none of that yeah. shit. I yeah, moved, yeah. and like two years later, I'm like, day party. It's, they got them shits in Chicago. <laughs> that's a, that's a huge thing right now. That's a yeah. huge thing in Chicago. So, you know, it's 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 good to see. You know, what I'm no, saying? it's, it's good definitely to see. good to see. I feel like it, since it, I left, like shit is like opened up a lot more. But yeah, bring, but it's like but, when when you're talking about like the, the tough parts, that's kind of something I want to highlight. And one thing I love that Dre does on his Instagram is he'll give like a more up close view on. The stuff about entrepreneurship that people don't talk about. I feel like mm-hmm. entrepreneurship is real glorified. And, and I always say, I would get a regular nine to five if I didn't have a problem with authority. That, that's, yeah, like, for sure. that's my number one thing. If I didn't have a problem with authority and did not like doing shit my way, I would just get a regular nine to five. But like, and you mentioned like the sleepless nights, want to go out and be out and kick it. And, you know, I have times where, you know, somebody told me like a week, week or two ago, like, man, you make, you make it look easy. Like y'all covering the beds, y'all doing this. And it's like, Bro, if you had every any idea how many nights I'd be losing sleep, and I'd be like, bro, I just I don't know if I can do this shit anymore. Yeah, take me like a little bit of an insight into like some of the tougher days, like in the beginning, to get into what people are like, who the fuck are you? I'm, why would I buy this shit? Like, tell right. me a little bit of that. Because like like you said, like nine to five is a scheduled thing, so it's a scheduled yeah. thing, and never never hit on nine to five because the nine to five is what you know saying funded this business. You know, yeah. like. You how I how I look at it is this is my nine to five this is my business so when I'm getting paid I'm funding my business once I don't need you know once my business can fund itself I don't need the nine to five I don't not saying necessary monetary wise the energy that I was putting in the nine to five I need to transport that to my business so that's yeah. why I no longer needed it so when people hate a nine to five like no first of all we need to get it understood. It's a lot of people that work in nine to five that makes it a lot more than entrepreneurs. Right. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Like, like yeah. that's that's one. And yeah. and another thing, that nine to five is nine to five cool, but when you're an entrepreneur, that's just 24-7. Excuse me. 24 seven. Ain't no, ain't no, ain't no ain't no you, yeah. like when you're used to working, somebody else has to deal with this situation. But with us, I gotta ship it off. If it's a yeah. a, a mistake on that behalf, I gotta do this when that when the the inventory has got to come in. We all got to do this extra hours and things like that. So it's all on us. We're coming up with designs. We're doing this. We're, you know what I'm saying, sending the money out, coming in like everything, every time it's, it's all on you. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people need to, a lot of people cannot do it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Right. You know, like stop putting don't you don't have to, just because someone else is doing it doesn't mean that you have to do it. You know, and some people will start a business and let someone else run it because they manage well uh, more. They manage better than the actual person who started the business. So right. it's it's a lot of it's it's a lot of up and downs, especially in the beginning. It's a long sleep night. It's days when you don't make no money. Like I think a lot of people don't understand. It. It's, it's days when me and Dre stand in the, the our first store, and um, days we just didn't make no money. And it's like okay, well you, we have to go back and brainstorm. Like okay, that can't happen again. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, how, how do we funnel people to our store? How do we make our, you know what I'm saying, the advertising better? How do we get our stuff in, in people's faces again? And, you know, we had when we had our first store, we were still doing pop-up shops because it's like, okay, we still got to make some money. You know, I remember me and Frank went to a flag football field. And that reminds you, I have a store. We went to a flag football field with T-shirts and hats and just sold them, you know what I'm saying, while my store still function. You know, like, you know, thankfully, you know, being blessed, we don't have to go to that, uh, you know, situation even more. But just to let people know, like, it has its downs, and the downs do hit hard. And it's something yes, like, you do. know what I'm saying? <laughs> how are we going to how are we gonna pay the yeah. rent? How are we going to do that? But I went from not days where I'm not selling not one thing to days where I'm selling, you know what I'm saying, hundreds of things. I went 
I remember I, one of our Black Fridays, I sold one shirt, one funky ass shirt, right? One funky shirt. Then I went to Black, I went to one Black Friday when, you know, you're making over, you know, 60K just at 12 hours. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's a blessing. It, it's just, it's waves to this and it's just, you learn it. It's a learning process. So you got to have the downs, I think, sometimes because you learn from it. And like yeah. I said about the clothing, you don't want to go back to the days when you ain't making no money. You know nope. what I'm saying? So you want to prevent that and you just got to stay ahead of the curve. Yeah, and I think uh, that's actually a good thing to bring up because it's like at the beginning, I also think like you need to pay attention, not pay attention, but like celebrate small wins too. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. when I first started this shit, barbershop, like it'd be like, oh, we got 25 listens today. Like, you know, 25 yeah, that, people listen to my yeah. shit. But it's like now if I get 25 listens. I'm some look, I'm sudden, yeah. I'm shutting something down. Yeah, so yeah I'm yeah. mad at somebody, like something happened. But uh, you know what I'm saying? Like it's just the growth that you have. And I also think you got to treat it as like, win this day you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. win this day worry about the next day for that one so now with chicago uh you know you guys are growing in that in, in the city it's like chicago is a hard market to, to open it to i always say like i hate the friend you can make it new york you can make it anywhere i think it's bullshit if you make it in chicago in you chicago, can make it anywhere yeah, chicago yeah. like kanye said the city of hell haters this is it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's true you know what i'm saying so what was like the toughest thing of like breaking into Chicago because Chicago, Chicago has a lot of uh, brands, you know, shout out to Joe Fresh Goods and what he, with his movement, what he did, sure. you know, uh, of course, leaders and things of that nature. How did, how hard was it to get in that space to where you guys can be respected on the same levels of, of like brands like that? And, and that's the thing, like I always looked at us as, as different because mm -hmm. I'm not going to necessarily say it was easy, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, coming from the mindset and the, hard working and how to make money when we was in college we just translated it over to to now you know what I'm saying like we're we're good people i'm not in i'm not robbing people talking bad about people you know what i'm saying so i don't have to you know what I'm saying look over my shoulders so to speak you know so um we got a real good relationship with the guys at leaders because one of our stores is right across the street for them just you know what I'm saying just talking to them and things like that but it was always you know saying me and dre going to do what we had to do regardless like I, it's like we didn't have in the mindset like you know is is the Chicago people going to accept us? Are they going to rock with us and things like that? We we knew it was going to happen. Like you got to go into things like not hoping and just knowing like no we we the shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you know you got to think like that. So if another brand be like no I'm the shit, you know what I'm saying? I respect it. You know what I'm saying? But I know that what keeps me going is I gotta you know what I'm saying, supply my daughter, my guys, you know, and my family and things like that and make my business the best business you, you got. So when I'm opening up these stores and they seeing, you know what I'm saying, the out the the outlook of and things like that, like, yeah, them guys did that shit. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, it's like, but we doing it for our customers. You know what I'm saying? Like, we want them to feel appreciated. You know, we don't want you to feel like you're buying a bullshit. So everything is about presentation with us, you know what I'm saying, yeah. and the professionalism with us. So you know, breaking that Chicago barrier to getting in there, I don't necessarily would say it's hard, you know what I'm saying? I think, you know, it's going to be hard doing anything, breaking it, yeah. you know, food, if you're in the food industry, technology industry and things like that. But if you got the group of guys like I got, like I have, I'm sorry, it's it's no stopping us, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I, and some people like to look at that as, I, I always say that, you know what I'm saying, I'm very fortunate to have the guys I have, you know what I'm saying? Like we all knew each other since we went to college in 2007. So, we we've been this. We know each other's personalities. We know, you know what I'm saying, how someone acts and things like that. So, you know, they could bring their crowd, you know what I'm saying? I could bring my crowd, this person could bring their crowd and they just put it all together and just it just the business grows. So we just we just in it. You know what I'm saying? Like like I'm looking to be the best, not just in Chicago, but you know, it's in the world. You know, like so it's only it's only a small stepping stone for us right now. Definitely. And you bring up the team aspect. That's like a huge thing. Like you can't do this shit by yourself. Like, you know, I got a team people I work with. You got team people you work with. Now it's easier when you work with people who you've got like, For you sure. know, like a rapport, you got history with, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. when I work with Pavi, I've known Pavi since 1998. I know things that make him tick or what makes him go, you know, what motivates him. He's vice versa with me. Now, you know that with your guys that you've been been cool with since, you know, college and things of that nature. So when it comes for newer people to come to the fold, this is something I've been dealing with recently of bringing in people who, you know, not necessarily part, necessarily part of the older family. What when you see a person who wants to work with y'all, what makes them think, OK, you when we look at you, we know you can hold down the pillars brand. Like what's some stuff that you look for when you're trying to bring in new people? 
like you said, just the same how how we are. We're looking for that that hard working, you know what I'm saying, want to grow, want to be there for the company, want to, you know what I'm saying, make the brand go further and further. You know, like I, I don't have time to be, you know, micromanaging. I'm not that type of, you know, saying owner or things like that. I don't like to micromanage, you know, so I'm going to give it to you like how it is pause and then um <laughs> <laughs> and you know saying just go so just the you know i need you to come with the good energy you yeah. know what i'm saying come with the good energy every day you know what i'm saying enjoy yourself like i want to make your you know someone's working for me i want to make their working experience tonight i want you to you know what I'm saying work with your peers have a good time laugh you know what I'm saying challenge yourself maybe a slight little competition let's see who get the most sales for the day and things like that so you know, with newer people coming in, it's, it's definitely going to be different because, like I, like you said before, like the other guys, they they know us. Like, yeah. we ain't never did, excuse my life, no weak shit in our life. Like, when we was at school, every plan that we had, it worked out. Right. Literally, everything we had, we worked out from forums to events to parties. It always was the best, you know what I'm saying? Like, because we always wanted to be the best. So it's going to be a little bit different to, you know what I'm saying, try to encourage them to be like us which they want but if we if they come in with that good energy and just want to work and want to improve on a daily basis with not just us themselves because this is going to be a stepping stone for them they can see how how we do things and they could take that and start their own company and move on move forward i'm not here to you know if people want to move on that's fine you know what i'm saying like that's what everything's about you don't have to stay here but you can learn from companies and things like that and move forward it's called gaining experience right definitely and so like we talk about like you know gain experience and things that nation now you know the, the further you move up on on the chart i feel like there's like always like a moment or two where you kind of like damn like you know like i'm kind of doing my thing right now it's kind of like a surreal moment like for me it was like when I found out that there was Bears players who like listen to our shit, you know, and mm -hmm. you know, my brother told me one time, but, like Eddie Jackson pulled up on him in the parking lot, was like, "I heard well, uh, what's your your brother do a show, right?" He's like, "Yeah, yo, tell him I like that shit." I heard what he said the other day. Right, 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 right. right, right. <laughs> now, I'm pretty sure I said something like, "This motherfucker can't tackle," but right. that was like kind of a situation like, can. "Oh," <laughs> and I was what like, "Oh." People are listening. So it's like, what was a moment where you like, okay, this thing is getting bigger now, like for you guys? Um, I was walking in the mall one day. Um, my store was all I was walking in the mall one day and I don't even think I had, yeah, I only had two stores in the mall. I didn't have the two stores in the mall. And I saw a lot of people wearing the jogging outfits. And then one of the guys, they knew me like, oh, bro, like, oh, I'm coming to get the shoes and jogging outfit today. Y'all got it. Ooh, the band. He's like, I'm on my way right now. Like that moment is like when I'm like, okay, we doing something nice. You know what I'm saying? Or just seeing people tag you in a lot of things like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, who sell it? You know what I'm saying? I need some hoodies and everybody's tagging. Not just one person just tag that. To the point it gets annoying. Like, right, okay, yeah. stop tagging me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When everyone's doing that, you know, it, and it's not just cause uh, it's people that I don't even know. They're just tagging pills, 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 pills. And you know what I'm saying? That's, but the real moment when I knew like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm making it and not have no issue with it. I remember, I'm not going to tell people where I live at, but when I was in high school, I used to in a work program and um, they was building this building. I'm like, man, I wonder how much it costs to live there. And um, one day I was, in high, I was in college. I'm like, God damn, that shit a lot of, you know, at the moment, I'm like, that's a lot of money to live there. Right. And now I live there now without blinking the eye. That's when I'm like, okay, I'm doing something. I'm doing something that I always want. Am I going to live there forever? No, I personally wanted to live in this spot because i saw them when they was first building it and i saw how much it was and i'm like damn i don't think i would ever at the moment afford that right and then when i had the opportunity like that's nothing i'm like okay i'm doing something good you know what i'm saying but definitely just seeing people every like i see people in the mall with the stuff or they coming in my store with pillars on you know what i'm saying yeah. it's just a, it's just a good it's just a good vibe or Oh, I, you know, I heard about this store, like new customers, just seeing new customers saying they heard about this place I, and just give good reviews or they left another store. Like, man, they were so nice at this store. Like, I just love the way y'all stores ran, things like that. That just puts the smile on my face regardless. You know, yeah. some people would just buy because they just felt like they just got the best customer service ever. You right. know, so oh, I got, I got to buy something, you know what I'm saying? And then when they found out it's, it's, black people that run is even uh, it, really it, 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 it really it really fucking like they be shocked yeah 
And it's like, you know, I think for me, when I figure out, like, when you guys are, like, grown, somebody asked me, like, I think they saw us, like, tweeting each other or someone on Instagram, like, you know Pillars Mike? I'm like, Pillars Mike? I'm like, I've known this nigga. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right, they be like, what, your name, your name Pillars? Like, my name's not Pillars. Yeah, my I'm like. Not Pillars. <laughs> exactly. So that's why I knew, like, the, the growth w- w- was get going from there, too. And it's like, you know, I, I do the same thing. When you were talking about, like, you, how you saw that apartment building. And it's a nice apartment, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, for uh, sure. <laughs> you know, I know the exact house in Beverly Hills I plan on living in within the next five years. I, right. I, I go over there. Me and Pappy had uh, lunch out there the other day, and I'm like, it's right there. Set you your, know what I'm saying? Set, set your goals. And set, set your goals, goals right there. And so, like, let's talk about the stores. So, you know, you said you got stores, and it's like a lot of people have clothing lines. A lot of people ain't got the brick and mortar store joint. You guys got four right now, getting ready to open the fifth one. So you got one in the West Loop. Uh, you got one on 87th. Uh, it's over there by CVS, right? Yeah, 87 Jeffrey, yep. 87 Jeffrey. Then you got one in, uh, what's the two malls? Forest City and Chicago Ridge. Chicago and, Ridge Mall, right. Yeah, so tell us about those four before we get into the fifth one. Like, you know, what made you say, okay, let's do a store now? And, you know, how that all kind of grew to the others. The crazy thing about it, so when we got the first store in the West Loop, it was a boutique. A um, young lady, um, she was moving out. Um, it was a boutique. It was nice. You know, we rebuilt it just a little bit. It was doing well. The crazy thing about it is, like, all those people in the West Loop were just new customers. Like, the the West Outers, they definitely mess with us heavy. They they yeah. definitely mess with us heavy. The reason why we got this, well, we was going to get another store, but it's like, okay, we got to, you know, the Southside people were the first ones that were shopping with, obviously, because we were from Southside Chicago. So, you know, it was kind of a, they like, man, I got to go all the way to the West Loop to buy something, to buy something. So, Honestly, we didn't even have that much money to open up the second one. Like, right. to be, I got on the truth with you. We didn't have that much money to open up the second one. Once we opened up the second one, now we hitting different demographics. We hear like the, the high school kids, the more South Siders, and then the, the first one, West Loop, is still still growing and things like that. The West Loop is actually the, the smallest store, but it's still a very you know profitable store. Yeah. And then um, me and Dre always wanted a mall. I always wanted Chicago Ridge Mall. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like that was always, I remember um years ago we were actually just going to do like a pop up there for like three to four months, like for the winter time, you know what I'm saying, the holiday season. Yeah. Um that that didn't pan out at the time. Um we searched uh, another few malls and we ended up being a four city. As you know, we in high school we was Yeah, let's be a spot to, in high school. Let's right be a time. spot, you know what yeah. I'm saying? It's not it's not what it used to be. But, Used Hell to be, no. but still, <laughs> definitely not. You know, say the downstairs even closed, but we still yeah. do very well there, profitable. And so, like, we just wanted to hit another, you know, saying demographic, and it was like, man, we got to get Chicago Ridge, the opening happening. Um, we got, you know, saying one of the biggest stores in there, and you know, you you want to put like a lot of people are, you know, don't like to do the brick and mortar because you know online is always going to be yeah. easier, easier shopping for people, but. Sometimes, you know, it's just best for people to come in. Come people in, can try see. It. Yeah, people can actually see, try it on and things like that. Just And just gain that experience with us. And they still shop online like, you know what, I mess with us. Because a lot of people didn't know we was a Chicago brand. You yeah. know, no, everybody's not going to know everything. You know, a lot right. of people like, I didn't know y'all have stores and things like that. So, you know, we moved over into, you know, Chicago Ridge. Obviously, it's more people there, you know, uh, dif- a different demographic and just the money flowing just everywhere. So, it got... You got, I got people shopping on the west side. I got people shopping on uh, east side. I got people shopping on south side. Now I got people in Chicago Ridge, just all over. So, you know, like I said, moving over for the first store to the second store, it really wasn't no money there. Right. But that's when the growth really start, you know, saying going towards the business and things like that. And then it was everything else was extremely profitable. I got I only got a couple more questions. I know you got busy, a whole bunch of stuff going on over there. So and, we, and, we, and we and we opened up in, um, and that's what oh, I was going to say. Okay, go, go ahead. Park, go. Orland Park right. for, for your fifth store. Now, Orland Park is like that. It's like a real, I love the, the Chief J factory out there. I, me and my family yeah. go all the damn time. It's like a nice yeah. ass mall. I used to actually work in Orland Mall for like a little bit of time. For, I don't know if they fired me or I quit. It was one or two. But, uh, <laughs> What made you say, okay, this is the next spot we want to go? Because it's a little further out from City Limits. For sure. Um, it was actually a couple of choices because, you know, some of these malls be owned by the same company. Right. So it was actually brought to us. Okay. Uh, we, did, we did something with the Chicago Bulls. Um, I don't know if a lot of people saw that. So they do like a, a black business um, every 
I think every month and things like that. And yeah, what's crazy is, yeah. what's crazy is, is, and I, I like to tell people all the time, you want to, you know what I'm saying? Stay, stay fresh all the time, but also be professional, no matter how the customer comes in. They, the setting is. <laughs> right. They could be the most, um, like they could be the most loudest, rudest person, but you never know you come across the, the lady, um, Miss Curry, that was her name. Um, she was just in there just shopping and, we just had a conversation and she was just like, Oh, I do this thing with the bulls. I like your brand. You're so polite. I love it. And that just took off just by me, just doing, you know what I'm saying? My job, greeting right. her, trying to help her with sizes and things like that. But, um, once the, you got displayed with the bulls, um, Orland, the people that own, they, they liked that the outlook of the store, like, okay, that's a pretty neat store and things like that. Cause we did try to get an Orland at first and, it was pretty much a, you know, not necessarily messing with it. It wasn't no room, you know what I'm saying, for us to be there. But that's, they basically um, kind of saw what came to us and we just agreed on it. But it was a couple other, you know, options um, at malls, but w- which we still might do that as well. But Orleans definitely, like I said, if you think Chicago Ridge is a huge demographic, show is Orland, Orland Park Mall. Um, Definitely when, we, definitely when we put the shoes in there, you know what I'm saying? But you can't go wrong with jogging outfits, short sets, T-shirts, hats, shoes. Like, we sell it all, man. So, will you, so Orleans, you guys have, like, a target, uh, uh, you know, launch day for that one? Um, it always, like I said, with entrepreneurship, everything always changes. Right. Like, <laughs> and, and, like I let people know that's that gets annoying. But you yeah. got to live with it. You know, like, we wanted – to be Expect August. for the best and prepare for the worst. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, you go in, like, oh, we got to fix this now, fix this now, fix this now. The target date was August, but it might be later than that. Um, I don't know at the moment. It just depends on how much the work get done and how much the stuff costs because, like I said, ain't nothing in this world free. Yeah. So we just got to work hard for it. But, you know, that's part of entrepreneurship. You can't, like, you're going to fall on your face. You know what I'm yep. saying? Things, nothing, I don't – I don't know one thing that went as planned. Real Bruh, talk, ever since I, like <laughs> I'm talking about, I'm talking about shipments. Yeah, it's always something that's going to be wrong. Yeah. It's just I nothing is going to plan, but you got to live with that. You know, so yeah. you are the boss, you are the entrepreneur. So because when you when you're the employee and things like that, you don't have to worry about none of that. This be my check. I'm gonna do my job. If like you don't got to worry about none of that. But you know, in this entrepreneurial life, it, it's definitely annoying. But it takes time. Nothing just being successful over time. I, um, I don't know if people know like Arthur Blank of uh, Home Depot. He's the owner of Home Depot. I think he, own, he owns the yeah, Atlanta Falcons. Falcons too. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think it's Arthur Blank that you saw Home Depot or whatever. But like the first three or four years, his business was not was not profitable at all. Like nowhere near. And then the third or fourth year, just boom. You know, so it started taking off like that. So it, it takes time. Nothing. You got to have patience. Okay? If you don't have patience, it's just, it, this is not for you. And that's fine. Nope. Everybody's not, everybody not meant to be an entrepreneur. Everybody, no, I'm not meant to be a carpenter or a, a, a doctor or a lawyer. It's people for that. So I commend, you know, saying anybody what they do in life and we need to start just start helping each other out and praising each other instead of hey. just putting so much hate. Patience is definitely key. You know, anybody, of course, you know, of all people, I am probably top five least patient motherfucker on planet Earth. Yeah, I, I used to need to be patient either. And it was <laughs> only only reason why I became patient a little bit is because of my daughter. Like, you gotta be, you gotta be patient. We have kids, kids, kids that do that to you, you know, and, and patience. And, and I'm hard. And the funny, funny thing, I went once I was in the car with you before I get to my last question. We was like, I forgot what the fuck we was talking about. And he was like, you know what your problem is? You just so fucking hard headed. Yeah. <laughs> and then my response yeah. was like, yeah, you're right, nigga. And what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You, 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 one of them people, whatever you have said in your mind, you are not changing it. Yeah. At you, all. Are not, you are not changing it at all. So yeah. even with sports, it's like, oh my God, we'll go ahead. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> last question for you, man. But, you know, a lot of people who watch this show, you know, aren't from Chicago uh, on the bigger plan. So, like, what is like the, ultimate goal like do you have like plans of expanding outside of chicago anything you know going on what's like the grand you know i, I hate saying five-year plan but like what's the the future of pillars look like honestly you just you just know don't know you know what i'm saying like i, I take everything I, i'm not gonna sit up and lie to you, like you know this is what's gonna happen things like that but i just want to continue to grow i do see us you know what I'm saying having a few outside of chicago but um i just want to continue to you know saying grow you know, saying the best way possible to make the best, the most money ever, and 
let my guys make the most money ever and just, you know, have job opportunities for the young kids and things like that. Because some people, you know, don't have the experience and, you know, they go into a job interview wearing a backwards hat and pants sagging and things like that just to show them like, okay, this is the way you do it. And just to show people that this is possible. A lot of people think because you have a clothing line, oh, it's a million clothing lines, I can't do it. Well, it's, it was a million clothing lines before me. You know what I'm saying? I don't even think this is successful. I don't know mm -hmm. what success is. So that's why I'm always trying to gain for more and more and more. I'm investing in properties and things like that. So, you know, like, don't be discouraged. I'm just trying to show you, like, we, we started late in the game. I did this, you know, I got my master's degree and everything and, like, doesn't have nothing to, to do with it. But it's you can make it in Chicago, especially as a young, you know what I'm saying, black man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah black woman black man like it's possible like i love like you said earlier i know a lot of people say this city of hate but you know when you don't have hate in your heart and always doing good good is always going to come back to you always remember that you know what i'm saying so Definitely. just be patient you know what i'm saying do what you want to do and not what the next person want to do you know what i'm saying learn how to save your money just just bring good energy you know what i'm saying yeah. it's like stop the negativity i used to be, be like an that. asshole that's, that's yeah, 95 percent of networking just don't be an right. asshole <laughs> you know i've seen people say man i don't want to have a store because i don't want nobody to come to my store well, well that means you're doing something you're not supposed to do right mind, yeah. your, mind, your, mind your business you yeah. know what i'm saying like i tell people all the time like people have conversations about me with you know celebrities and who they going with and shit like that i'm like man i don't know that shit like i don't care <laughs> like, how's that going to make me some money you know what i'm saying yeah. like oh Lori Harvey start messing with which come like, like what the fuck does that do for me? Like you know what I'm saying? Hey, this is name drop capital in this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like my one of my my best friend wearing the socks at right now. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he's out of damn mind. Go Cubs! It's always it's always go Cubs. You know what I'm saying? So hey, you just gonna have to deal with the negativity sometimes. But yeah, and all in all seriousness, no. But you could like we're here to show that you can do it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like. It's, but it ain't easy. It's nothing in it. If, nah. if it was easy, everybody, everybody would, would do it. this shit, bro. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I but, say that every time. And it's like you got to do like self motivation every day too. And also, you brought up with success, and I'm gonna close it on this. Uh, success is like what is success to you? Like it's success, success to me might be different than somebody else. That's what you should look at, and don't compare your journey to anybody else's. I know we live yeah. in this Instagram world. I look like everybody got their shit together. Trust me, they don't. And you brought up about Arthur Blank. I mean, shit, you can look at some rappers. Look at Two Chains, Rick Ross. Them dudes were damn near forty when they got where they, they are now. You know going, what I'm saying? Right. Like, but they li shit. they live in a good life. They live right. in a good life. And forty, and by the way, forty is young when you got money. <laughs> yeah, forty. Yeah, forty is definitely young, especially with us. And yeah. one thing I can do say about success is I know, you know, my my vision of success is my daughter not having to worry about anything financially. Yeah. I know it's you know what I'm saying cliche and things like that. No, we all gonna have problems. Yeah. We all in life gonna have problems. Like the rich people have problems. Everybody because they people think because you have money that you don't have problems. Problems going to occur. Yeah. But if you could take away a financial problem, that's always the best. That's one like that's like the people's biggest hurdle or biggest problem or biggest thing they can't get it's over, money. like money, anything money. financially. So if I could provide my daughter to, you know, if she wanted to go to college and it's paid for, she don't have to worry about you know, student loans or you know, saying a car note or a mortgage and things like that. If I could take that away from her and just like listen, focus on what you want to do, the money. This is set aside for you. You know what I'm saying? That's success for me. And that's how us as black people got to do is pass this stuff down. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like instead of just holding on to ourselves, you know, it's a lot of different um, races who who pass stuff down. It's like people that already have houses. You know what I'm saying? House paid for. Have you ever, have you ever seen a person where they got a house, they got a car, but work a regular job and you're like, how are you afford How the this? fuck you got that? <laughs> because all the stuff is paid for. Yeah. All the yeah. stuff is paid for. You know what I'm saying? So that's how we gotta do as you know, saying the the black the black families and just I'm down, down for down black nepotism. Fun. I'm gonna keep telling people that I'm, I'm down for, for sure. black nepotism 100 sure. percent Um sure. by the way, let them know where they can get in tune with you. You know, Twitter, you know, what's the pillars website. Anybody want to get some clothes, check y'all out, let them know. All right, you can follow me on um, Instagram and Twitter, please. P L Z say the baby underscore baby on Instagram and IG pillars. We got um, pillars underscore club. 
Um, the website is pillarsclub.co, not .com, so it's .co, C-O, or you can find, um, find us in our stores in the 1167 West Madison Street, that's in the West Loop, or 2006 East 87th Street, that's over East, Four City Mall, Chicago Ridge Mall. Man, you realize how many stories you got. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, um, Orland Park Mall in a few months. So, yeah, I went from I went from pop up shops and selling shirts in my trunk with my guys. We went to a million pop up shops to, you know, saying five stores. So it's definitely a blessing. I always want to thank them, um, every last one of them that help us, you know, move in the right direction. Because without them, honestly, bro, we probably wouldn't even be here. Yeah. So I want to thank Definitely. them, you know, and we all we all family, all brothers. I always thank you, Scott, for your you know what I'm saying support and things like that. Oh, yeah, Happy the whole I got right now, family. Oh yeah, my man, my man, my man. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna have all this in the description box for right for sure, you know, for sure. when we got on that. But yeah, you know to follow me on Twitter at Barbershare Scott on Twitter and Instagram. Follow the Barbershare Network at Barbershare Net. Subscribe to Patreon, patreon.com backslash Barber's Chin Network. And, of course, follow h and Media, h and Media TV on Twitter and at h and Media. We'll be back next week with another edition of I'm Not Gonna Hold You to Offseason. We out, y'all. Triple double hat trick, I know the cold too. Ice tray, go for tray, yeah, we cold too. Get in paper on these player haters, old news, money on the other line.